Now back to Inside West Virginia Politics with Mark Curtis. Welcome back to Inside West Virginia Politics. Earlier this week, the Attorney General's office announced new claims in the lawsuit against the Wheeling Charleston Diocese. And we're going to be joined now by Attorney General Patrick Morrissey himself. Thank you so much for being with us. Hey, thanks for being here. I appreciate you taking the time. Very busy week. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of these new claims that are Absolutely. coming out. Well, first of all, I want to thank not only our team, but everyone in the public who stepped forward over the last couple months because they've provided us with new information, which has led to new allegations against the Wheeling Charleston Diocese. Instances where we're aware that the old bishop had knowledge that background checks were not being uh, conducted, uh, other specific allegations of abuse of a teacher and a child. And so what we did is we amended our complaint because we want to make sure that when this case ultimately gets decided that we're putting our strongest facts out there. But the only way that we were able to make that happen is that people in the public came forward. Because for a case like this, we're really dependent upon witnesses and people stepping up. And it's not an easy case because a lot of people want to put these terrible issues behind them. So I'm really appreciative and anyone watching, if you're aware of any allegations against the Wheeling Charleston Diocese, please bring it to our attention. That's the only way we're going to bring accountability to the church and obviously to enforce our consumer protection laws. Now, the Wheeling Charleston Diocese has responded. They say it, sure. they said in part, the new allegations filed today contain factual inaccuracies that are not included in the Attorney General's prior complaint. You talk about yeah. transparency. What do you sure. think about them calling these factual inaccuracies? I mean, I, you know, I point to one of the things they did the last time. Uh, one of their response was that, oh, well, these are really old allegations, therefore you shouldn't bring them up. Well, they hid them, they concealed them for a long period of time. And also it's important for the public to know that uh, the reason why 31 uh, people were named credibly accused priests is because we did a subpoena. Then the list followed out probably about a month after that. So there's a relationship here. And uh, if we have information, we had actually relied on the diocese when we filed the first complaint. They had provided us information saying there was a teacher contract, there was a teacher. Turns out that it wasn't, we changed that. But actually we had relied on them for some of the information that we brought forth in the complaint. We know that we have really strong allegations and we vet them very carefully. And obviously uh, we have a pretty good track record in the office of making assertions that could be backed up in court. But the most important thing that there are fresh allegations, information from 13, from 16, from 2006, seven and eight. And so these aren't decades old. But once again, even to the extent we cite something that's old, a lot of this just came out in November. And so you can't conceal something for decades, wake up and say, well, it's old news. We have to get to the bottom of it, and we want to bring transparency to the system and ultimately make sure that vic victims' issues are addressed. But I really am grateful for the public stepping forward because that's how we're going to make this case move forward. Quickly on this subject, perpetrators' names were not necessarily in the lawsuit. Yeah. Uh, do you think that people deserve to know who these teachers are? Like sure. you said, these are not decades-old cases. Some of these were just recently. Well, certainly we've identified certain information. And for instance, there are people that were convicted of crimes. And when there's public information, we put that forward because we do think the public deserves to know. You know, we also try to have a balance in terms of the witnesses. If someone's been abused and it's a very sensitive matter, we really work really hard to um, not put their name all over the news because we want to respect those people. These are people that have been through really brutal experiences. And so while we're going to prosecute these cases, we have to try our best to protect people who've been through a lot. So I try to have a balance in terms of how this uh, works because we do, at the end of the day, want to make sure that the public knows uh, all of these individuals. I'd also note that there have been criminal referrals. And quickly, we are under 30 seconds yeah. left, but you have a couple new lawsuits Absolutely. going on with pharmaceuticals. You said that uh, the McKesson lawsuit was the first of many. Yeah. Do you think that we have more coming? Well, we do have a number in the hopper. We just sued Purdue Pharma, and they're obviously the largest opiate manufacturer. Uh, we have separately lawsuits against a lot of uh, generic companies. I'm going to say two things. One, we're going to be as aggressive as anyone in the country going after opiate abuse. We've gone after the root causes. People should look at the action of what we've accomplished and we're going to keep going not only through litigation but getting to root causes like when we 
completely helped change the national drug quota system. That was after our lawsuit against the DEA or our best practices as to when prescribers should prescribe opiates compared to non-opiate alternatives. We have to be thoughtful and holistic about our approach. Look at supply, demand, and education. That's what we're doing to go after the opiate epidemic. I think we've been making progress. Prescribing numbers are down 35% since I took over, but we need to double down and do even more because we have to stop the senseless death. Excellent. Thank you so much, Attorney General Patrick Morsi. Thank yeah. you for being here. Thank you very much. And we're going to have much more Inside West Virginia politics coming up next.